Hey everybody, Parks Alza here with Score.gg, joined by JJ, the support for FlyQuest. Thank you so much for the interview. First off, congratulations on the win as well. Um, so I want to talk about this season compared to before. Mm -hmm. We got to kind of see you guys uh, really, I think, grow as a team last summer. And this year you brought in a couple new players. Mm -hmm. um, and right off the bat, it already seems like you have better synergy than a lot of the teams, especially we did see a lot of trades in the offseason, of course. But how do you feel like the team kind of exists as a unit right now? Uh, I think it's a little weird because we're still a relatively new team. And although we've shown to be really in sync sometimes, at other times I feel like we're completely out of sync. And, um, yeah, it's definitely easier to coordinate things uh, than Lost Split because we had Flame and Keen. Keen's English is really good. Flame's English is pretty good, but sometimes, like, things get lost in translation or we misunderstand things. And, um, yeah, so just things were hard for him to explain in English sometimes. And so there would be a desync in what we wanted to do, whereas now it's easier because everyone's primary language is English, except for Santorin, who has lived here for like five years or something. Um, so yeah, I think we're, we're getting a lot better, but we're still not there for sure. So yeah, obviously still things to work on. Do you feel like um, your communication is strong enough now and you're kind of sense of identity is strong enough now that there are other things that have priority for for fixing and fine tuning or do you is it just kind of like yeah no it's always just better communication and better synergy uh for sure i think our macro is really bad right now and it's something we've been trying to work on but um it's pretty hard to work on because stage games are a lot slower than scrim games and so scrim games sometimes are over in 20 minutes and then you don't have to practice like the 25 to 35 minute mark where like wave management and vision control matters a lot. Um, so yeah, in scrims, it's really hard to get a hang of that. And right now we're trying to work on those things pretty, like we're trying to really hammer it in that like mid game is important, how we should be doing things. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, we, you know, we oftentimes go back to the NA RAM, um, everyone yeah. mid, so. Yeah, uh, for sure, like, today versus 100 Thieves, like, it's not a win, really, to be proud of, because I feel like our macro was still pretty bad, and we made a lot of mistakes, but, like, we were the better NA RAM comp we had as Zoe, so, like, it's pretty easy for us to just, like, group up mid and push them out, and, like, yeah, I feel like a lot of NA teams just aren't playing the macro properly, and so teams that are better at NA RAM just end up winning out a lot of the time. Interesting, and, I mean, this game had was tied for the fewest kills. Um, and the other one, I think, was your game as well. Oh, I didn't know um, that. Which normally you would think is like, oh, just great macro. They just out macro them <laughs> um, entirely. So it's interesting that you say, you know, it actually was not good macro. It was just we had the better comp for what happened. Yeah. I, was it the CLG game? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, the CLG game for sure was the game that made us realize, like, our decision-making and macro and mid-game were just completely, like, were, was awful. We're definitely getting better at it, but there's still a lot of hiccups. And then this last game, yeah, we still made a lot of mistakes. I feel like these were kind of opposite games, though, because the CLG game we picked to stomp lane and try to close out early, and we weren't able to because we, our macro was poor. In this game, we picked a lot of scaling, and our macro decision was still maybe slightly better, maybe like about the same, but because we picked more scaling, we ended up winning. And I think just the draft made the difference mostly. Yeah, and it was kind of like, oh, very even game, one team fight, and then all of the towers fell, and the game was over, so. Yeah, it's like, you watch TL, and, like, they have one decisive team fight where they just end up cleaning house, uh, but this wasn't that. This was just, like, NA RAM. We got a good engage off, and we have a better team fight, so we win. It's, yeah. Well, it did work out this time, but, uh, you know, it's always nice to take away uh, lessons and also get the win. Mm -hmm. um, so congrats sure. on, on getting both, you know. <laughs> it's really, you got everything you could. Um, so you, you've talked in the past about being a quick learner. Because you went to college, you learned how to learn. Uh, you learned more about yourself and, and how to study up on things. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you kind of are taking some maybe control or command over, uh, you know, like figuring out some of these problems and then helping others, you know, with solutions? Uh, I wouldn't say so as much because right now I feel like 
Uh, a lot of our problems, one, uh, sometimes in scrims are individual, like sometimes I'll underperform if I'm having a bad day or like any given person on our team might. Um, and then it's hard to work through macro that way. But also when we do have macro problems, it's generally the veterans like Santorin or Pobelter or Wild Turtle that realize it quicker than me and Viper because they instinctively just know the game better and have deeper game knowledge. So they're able to look at it and say, we should have done this instead of this. And then we'll... We'll look at it, analyze it, and then it'll become more clear to me and Viper that, okay, that is correct, and we'll try to do that next time. Makes a bunch of sense, the veteran status, you know, trumping mm -hmm. um, over that. Um, so you also, well, I, actually, I guess I'm just curious, the your interaction with the academy team. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm actually really curious about your academy support, because I've been able to talk to him. Uh, you know, I actually covered him a few months ago back on scouting grounds. Yeah. Um, so how do you feel like you kind of get to interact with them? Are you, are you excited about that kind of relationship that you have with them? And of course, how is Duo King doing? Yeah, so my relationship with Duo King is like pretty casual. We're not like best friends or anything, but I'm definitely not like, oh, this guy's gonna take my spot. I can't tell him <laughs> anything. Uh, pretty much whenever I have time in between scrims, I'll go over to the academy side of the house and then I'll watch scrims. And if I see something that he's doing incorrectly or that I don't think is good, I will tell him and he'll consider it sometimes. Sometimes he'll be stubborn and be like, no, this is definitely like the right, the right way to play the game or the right rune to take or whatever. Um, but most of the time I'm right. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a learning relationship for the both of us. I think he also like if, uh, range supports ever become like super meta, I think I'll have a lot to learn from him. He's definitely probably better at Soraka and like Morgana and Sona than me. So uh, yeah, it's definitely a learning relationship for the both of us. Those would be the three picks that I would call out as well. So <laughs> it's good good to hear he's at least consistent staying on those. Um, but yeah, the no boots Sona, I still have a question mark on. Yeah. Um, so you what, what do you feel like you have learned then yourself this split you know stripped away from the team and what the team is doing um you know we, we got to see you int on orn and then completely turn that around in game yeah. very fast learner there um but you know other than that kind of what are you personally working on uh right now i'm kind of working on my champion pool like i've played orn like four games or so and it's not like in the scrims i'm only playing orn either i'm definitely playing all of the meta champions but I'm kind of having a hard time getting the hang of certain champions. And so we'll consider playing them on stage, but we try to stray away from certain champions. I'm not going to say them yeah. for obvious reasons, but I'm definitely starting, still learning a lot. And I feel like, uh, yeah, I still have a long way to go for sure individually, uh, mastering certain champions and like how those, how certain situations need to play out. Like, for example... Actually, no example. Right, that's, that's probably fair. a better idea. Yeah. Um, so, for example, Silas. Yeah, for you know, example, Silas. Support. How would you use him as a support? For sure. I need to steal Alistar Ulti, and then I can start <laughs> slapping him with my chains. Stuff like that. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I guess both of them are, are unchained. There's, a, there's like an unchained yeah, Alistar yeah. skin. Yeah. We've got to see it someday. You've got to make it happen. Um, cool. Well, any, anything you want to say before we head off? Uh, not really. Thanks for cheering for us. Uh, for, for any FlyQuest fans and any non-FlyQuest fans, uh, we put out a lot of great videos on our FlyQuest Sports YouTube account. If you haven't seen those, we do like weekly vlogs where one of us will have the camera for the week and we'll just go around doing our usual business. Um, and yeah, that's it. Awesome. You're also casting, right? Oh yeah. Occasionally I'm casting Academy. Uh, whenever we have the time, which isn't always, but at twitch.tv slash FlyQuest Sports, Thursdays or Friday nights, uh, me and Viper, I think we're going to cast again next week, which is, I don't know what date it is, but February 20-something that week <laughs> we're casting, so catch us there. Awesome. Well, hope you're having fun with that. Thank you so much for the interview, and thank you all for watching. We'll catch you around.